Hello there! So, for a while I've been wanting to do something kinda like this, but I haven't really been able to find a good time for it because, you know, there's a lot of little subjects that you guys keep asking me about that I want to talk about. Um, there's a couple of things that don't really fit into my normal channel uh, style that I want to put in here. And so I figured I'll just move it all together. So there are a couple of questions you guys have been asking me about, uh, which I will answer specifically relating to my uh, tab system that I use to take notes when I'm doing my really long in-depth reviews. Um, excuse me. Uh, I wanted to give a quick update on what I'm going to be doing for in terms of uh, videos for the next couple of weeks. And I just wanted to give a shout out to some YouTubers that I like because uh, some of them are big and some of them are small, but a lot of these I feel just deserve some attention and I find them entertaining and I think you guys might enjoy them too. So first I'm just going to give a quick update on what I'm doing. Um, as of the time of this filming, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, the review for that is filmed, and it should be out by the time you guys see this. Uh, after that, I'm pr or after this, I should say, I'm probably going to release my Twilight Clones video, because that, that one is all scripted and ready to go. I just gotta actually get it, you know, recorded and edited. And uh, after that, one of my patrons requested that I do a uh, Warhammer 40k book, which I already have lined up, that one. I'm not super familiar with Warhammer, but... I do know some of the lore, it sounds really interesting, so I'll I'll give it a shot. And, well, obviously I'm going to give it a shot because it was a patron request, but I'm going to be reviewing that one. That one looks like fun. I have a... I, there's one book that I recently finished, or at least I decided I was done with because I didn't actually finish it, and I might be ranting about that one. I'm not sure if I have enough to say to really make it into a big video. We'll see. And uh, finally, I have a video on psychic books that I want to talk about, like books that are supposed to teach you how to be psychic and how to use telepathy and stuff. That one, that one is shaping up to be a lot of fun, so that, I'm hoping to get that out by the end of November, uh, possibly beginning of December, but we'll see. Next up, a lot of people have been asking me about my uh, tab system that I use, and yes, it is different from Crimson Rogues, so I feel I should talk about it. Now, uh, when I first started doing it, it was with... Uh, Elixir, which was Hilary Duff's really, really, really terrible young adult series that I read over a year ago. And that one, I wasn't really planning for it to be as long and in-depth as it was. I just uh, thought they'd be like a short, stupid read that I'd laugh about, but it was wrong on, or it was bad on so many levels and just in every way. It was pure insanity, so that's why I wound up making that really long review about it. And with that one, that was the first time I used tabs. And actually, believe it or not, I had not heard of Crimson Rogue by that point. So, you know, I didn't rip him off. We both kind of ripped off Strange Aeons. But <laughs> anyways, and after that, I didn't use it for a long time because I would just uh, write out notes longhand as I was reading. And I have stopped doing that recently because, uh, and I write it out longhand because typing it just, uh, it's easier for me to retain the information if I write it longhand, basically. But... Also, if I write it while I'm reading, then sometimes I will um, note that, oh, hey, this bit doesn't really make sense, but then it's explained later, so it winds up uh, canceling out, and so I'll have to like remove that from my notes or remember not to talk about it or something. So I've just determined that the tabs are a little better because I can put something there, and then I can go back through the whole book, or whole series rather, because most of the time I do series, and just write out notes that way uh, based on the tabs. And the way I do it is... Uh, pink is for bad character moments, and that means, like, something with characters being inconsistent or uh, the narrator trying to make us feel something about the characters that it's not really showing, like if they're being a dick but the author's treating them like they're a super nice person, then that would also go in there. And just general unlikability where it's not supposed to be unlikable. So that's just, you know, general character stuff for the most part. Uh, blue is bad plot points, which is kind of the same. You know, sometimes it's just like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Other times it's... I just don't like the direction this is going, other times it's, this is stupid, you know, that, that sort of thing. And then green is one bad foreshadowing, which I feel like that one goes without saying, you know, uh, foreshadowing something a little too uh, blatantly, you know, like not only having Chekhov's gun hung on the wall, but putting it right in front of the audience's face so that they can see it for a full 10 seconds, like that sort of thing. And other than that, it's bad world building or setting details, which... <laughs> I mean, if you've watched any of my videos, I feel like you should have a pretty good grasp on how I feel about that by now. Uh, purple is just bad lines in general. So, you know, stupid lines, stupid bits of dialogue. Uh, I guess if I were to ever review something self-published that wasn't properly edited, I would put uh, 
misspelled words and grammatical mistakes on there, but I don't really do that. And then orange is just miscellaneous other. Other usually winds up being something that just irks me personally. Like if the book is trying to push some sort of message that I just hate and disagree with or something like that. And by putting all those together, I can usually form a pretty clear picture in my mind as I'm reading and right after I'm done reading uh, to of how I feel about everything. And then I can go through, take all my notes, and in about usually six to ten pages, I will be... I'll have a, enough material for an hour and a half to two hours. And that last bit is really important because usually when I'm doing those really, really long reviews, I wind up cutting out some stuff that I just don't think is very important. Like in Battlefield Earth, I wound up cutting about five minutes because it was just ranting about how the Scots and the uh, American tribesmen could understand each other and they were both speaking uh, English over a thousand years after the world had been destroyed with no communication between them. And really, they would be speaking separate languages. But at the same time, I'm willing to work with the book on that. Like, that one's just a little nitpicky as far as I'm concerned, so I wound up cutting it. If there's any bit of advice to be gleaned from that, it's just know what to cut, because not everything is going to be as important to you as it is to others, and most of my other reviews have something similar to that. Now for the fun bit! Here's a bunch of YouTubers that I really like. Uh, some of these guys are bigger than me, and I'm already decent sized as is, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, partially because, one, a lot of these guys probably have considerable overlap between their fan base and mine, and two, I, I feel like, yeah, just a quick shout out is enough to get you over towards them. They don't really need the help that much. Whereas the smaller ones, I really do want to help out because sometimes all it takes is that little push and that's what brings their channel into everyone's recommended and then they start watching it and then from there they have something to build on and grow. And, you know, that, that's basically how my channel got started. I'll talk a little bit about that in a sec, but I, I just kind of want to pay it forward, you know? First up is Daniel Green. Yeah, pretty sure you're all familiar with him. He's just a dude who likes to talk about fantasy and sci-fi, mostly books, but he does go into other stuff as well. He's branched out a bit, and um, my channel actually started when he gave me a shout-out. Or, it didn't start that way. I'd been around for a while, but he just shouted out my Wheel of Time video, and then a whole bunch of people watched that, and then it just sort of exploded from there. So, thank you, Daniel, and if that sounds like something that interests you, check him out. Next up, we have Strange Aeons. Now, Strange Aeons does do a lot of book reviews, kind of like I do. Like, she made fun of Onision's books, and she's also made fun of some bad fan fictions and stuff. And she also does a lot of miscellaneous stuff, like she just looks into weird Tumblr stuff, and just, I don't know, it's, I guess you'd call her a vlogger, or vlogger. I, I kind of hate that word, if I'm being honest. But, you know, she does have some overlap with me, and so if that's something you're into, that's not all that she does, but she does do a lot of it. And... Admittedly, she doesn't go into as much detail as someone like me does, but they're still fun. Then we have Hello Future Me, who gives a lot of videos on world building and writing advice, which are really, really good. He does uh, focus a lot more on, like, video games and movies and such than I do, but, you know, variety is the spice of life. And he does do some more in-depth, like, thematic stuff as well, so he's pretty fun, and his stuff is really well put together, really well researched, really well edited. It, it, they're just fun to watch. Then there is Crimson Rogue. Now Crimson Rogue, just like me, does long in-depth book reviews. He occasionally does uh, smaller, shorter ones as well when he, it's just something, hey, I thought this was okay. And, um, but he mostly got known for doing reviews of movie adaptations of books. Uh, I believe his show is called The Book Was Better, which, <laughs> come on, man. Hurry up, get the next episode out. It's been like, what, six months? It, it's been a while, but um, yeah, he does a lot of that and it's a lot of fun, like, if you like my stuff, again, you probably have already found his, but if you haven't, go check him out. Then there's Dominic Noble, who falls into a similar category. He also does movie adaptations of book reviews, and he occasionally reviews books on their own, and... Yeah, he's fun. He has his own style, though. And th that's the one thing to keep in mind about all of these, is even if some of us have inter uh, overlapping areas that we cover, I think we all have different enough styles. Uh, but at the same time, it's easy to accidentally creep into uh, ripping people off. That's part of why I've never reviewed Onision's books, because other people have already done them. They've done them a lot better than I probably could, and I don't want to retread old ground, and plus I really just want Greg to go away, and the dude thrives on negative attention, so I don't want to bring him more attention. That said, if he ever gets around to releasing his fabled fourth book that he's been working on forever, if enough people want me to, I might, might do that one. I got off topic there for a sec, but yeah, 
Dominic Noble, he talks about movie adaptations of book reviews. He's, he's fun. His humor is, <laughs> well, it's kind of dumb, but so is mine. And admittedly, he doesn't go into as much detail as I do, but still, I'd recommend checking him out. And last of the big ones, we have Mother's Basement, who is, you know, again, really in-depth on a lot of things about, like, themes and advice and stuff, but he focuses mostly on anime and video games as opposed to books or movies or anything like that. So I would imagine he's a little bit out of the wheelhouse for a lot of you guys, but he still, he still has some really neat stuff out there, and he's fun, and yeah, there's just good advice there. All right, now for the medium and small guys, who I'm going to try and spend a little more time on. Uh, first up is Stoneworks World Building, and that one is exactly what it says on the tin. You know, he, he gives world building advice, kind of similar to why I do, but he talks about di different subjects. Like, again, we're talking about similar things, but different subjects in the same uh, thing, and we both have our own styles and everything, so it works out pretty well. And he talks about uh, the Elder Scrolls a lot in particular, which I think is neat because I'm actually not that familiar with the lore of Elder Scrolls, and he focuses on areas that have helped me with my world building even, so... Hey, even I have blind spots, but yeah, he's pretty good, so if you like my world-building stuff, definitely check out Stoneworks. And if you're looking for more in-depth book reviews, check out Jordan Harvey. Now, she doesn't upload very often, unfortunately, but when she does, she will take, like, a single book and go on about it for 30 minutes to an hour and give a lot of detail about things and go into themes and the pros and all that sort of thing. I, I think you get the idea by this point, but she's really good as well. She's a unfortunately small channel, so go help her out. So tell her James said hi. Next up is The Boy John, and he is just kind of, you know, random sketch comedy, or maybe not sketch comedy, but he does comedic videos on here on YouTube, and yeah, he's just really funny. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about that. He, he has this nice sarcastic or sardonic, maybe would be a better word, sense of humor, and uh, when I first found him, he had a couple hundred subs. Last I checked, he had over 10,000, I think. So, yeah, go, go give him some more love, too. Then there is Space Rat Productions, who is kind of in the same boat, except his sense of humor is a little bit different, and the video's types that he puts out are a lot different as well. His are usually less than a minute in length, and there tends to be a very understated quality to all of his jokes. Like... I don't even know how to put it exactly, but like it's just so blank-faced whenever he says something bizarre that it really gets me. It's my sense of humor. And he's, I think, just a little over a thousand subs, so go check him out. Then there's Creme of the Earth, who they are, like, distressingly small. Why, why does this guy not have more subs? Like, basically, they talk about Cosmere stuff. You know, they talk about the lore and some theories and such. Uh, and it's very high quality when they do that, but more importantly, they have music. Like, they, they have music about the Cosmere, about specific moments in the books and such that have happened, that they've written, and it's... Well, it's really good. I hope if there's ever a movie or something, adaptation of any of these, that they would use music similar to that. So, that that's a good one. Check it out. Then there is Lucas Arnold, and he does impressions of John Mulaney. That, that's about all you need to know. Then we have Satan Madpun. Now, I actually did a response to one of Satan Madpun's videos a couple of months ago, specifically his video about how Harry Potter sucks, and I think most of his other stuff is really good, too. Like, he has several other videos about just going into really long, in-depth analyses about other things. Like, he had one on Red Dead Redemption, which is... I, I never thought about Red Dead Redemption that way, and I really love Red Dead Redemption. So, if you're into that video essay type thing, then watch Satan Madpun. Then there's That Movie Chick, and she's actually friends with Dominic Noble, and she's been on his channel a couple of times, that's how I found her, but apparently other people have never bothered to go check her stuff out, which is a shame, because it's actually really funny. She talks about weird movies and weird TV shows, and, well, no, that's, that's about all you need to know. She talks about, like, for example, the WB Tarzan show that they made in 2003. Yeah, the WB Network had like a modern reboot of Tarzan, where Tarzan was out in the wilds until he was like 18, 19, and then he came over to New York and helped to fight crimes. It's, it's bizarre, and she talks about stuff like that all the time, so she's fun. Then we have Ace Vane. Now this guy I found when he had whew, a couple hundred subs, I think, and now he has over 70,000. He's catching up to me, actually. So I considered not putting him on here, but eh, why not? Like, Ace Vane is just... He does voiceovers of cartoons, kind of like a bridge series, like, you remember those, like Helsing and Bridge and stuff? Except his are usually taken from old DC cartoons, and they're, like, 
only a couple of minutes long, and they have nothing to do with the actual plot of the show. But this dude has, uh, one, his voices are really funny that he does, and two, just the timing of everything and the way he's able to write, I don't even know how to describe it without just giving a bunch of jokes, but I have not found writing this tight and this over the top and weird, but at the same time hilarious since the boondocks. So if that's something that sounds like fun to you, just, just watch a couple of Ace Vane videos. I, they're amazing. Then there is Max Sabbath. Now, Max Sabbath is a Black Sabbath cover, cover band, except they change all the songs to be about McDonald's and they dress up as McDonald's characters to do it. Yeah, it's really stupid, but my god, it's funny. And finally, we have something that isn't really a YouTube channel, but I kind of want to tell people about it anyways, just because it's a lot of fun. It's Memory TV. Now, Memory TV is essentially just English translations of Arab news. Like, uh, and I will come right out and say that it's translated by an Israeli company who have in the past been accused of, like, ignoring more uh, moderate voices that appear on the news and just pushing forward the extreme ones to make it seem like everyone in the Middle East acts like that. But that aside, it is amazing to watch these extreme crazy people go on the news and rant about stuff. It, oh my god, like, I, uh, in my review of my old book that I wrote when I was 15, I put a bunch of memory clips in there. And so if anyone ever calls you a watermelon seller or tells them or tells you behave yourself by Allah, you will get a taste of my shoe. You'll know where it's from. Like memory TV doesn't really have a channel on YouTube, but there's tons of clips and compilations out there for the love of God. Check them out and make memes and shit because I need more of that in my life. That's about all I have to say here. Like, uh, like I said, this is just kind of an update slash answering a question that a lot of you guys have asked slash just wanting to help promote other YouTubers. So that's about all. Now is the time for the verbal shout-out for my $10 and up patrons. Apo Savalainen, B. Quinn, Brother Santodis, Christopher Quinten, Embis, Emily Miller, Evan Stigall, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, NB Star, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Vacuous Silas, and Vay Victus. You guys are the best, as well as all the other names here. And if you want to get stuff like early access to my videos, and you can suggest new content, you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to my Patreon. And if you either can't do that, or you just hate me and don't want to do that, then, well, liking this video, commenting on it, and sharing it around really helps to get the word out. And even if you dislike it, that also boosts it in the algorithm. So really, no matter what, I win here. Uh, anyways, see you guys later.